Barbara, will you call the roll, please? Elder Pierce? Here. Mr. Ridgeway? Here. Here. Mr. Warren? Here. Supervisor Here. First order of business this evening is a public hearing on local law number two for 1995 titled Deputy Supervisor Position. Um, for those of you who may not have a copy of the local laws written, I'll read it to you. Uh, section 1, Office of Deputy Supervisor. There is hereby established for the Town of Balney the Office of Deputy Supervisor. Section 2, the procedure for appointment of a Deputy Supervisor, the term of office, the duties and limitations of Office of a Deputy Supervisor shall be in all respects in accordance with the provisions of sec Section 42 of the Town Law except that any person appointed to the Office of Deputy Supervisor shall be a sitting member of the Town Board of the Town of Valley. Section 3, the Deputy Supervisor shall serve at the pleasure of the Town Supervisor. Section 4, this local law relative to the requisite qualifications for appointment as Deputy Supervisor is intended to supersede Section 42 of the Town Law. Section 5, this local law shall take effect January 1st, 1996. I'm going to open the floor now to um, comments on this local law? Uh, any comments from the public? Colleen. I'm Colleen Scott. I live on Coffee Road in Bonk. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a good idea because I know that in the past we've had deputy supervisors who we didn't see. They didn't know what was going on in the town. I don't know how they could, you know, step in and take over. God forbid if something happened about the health of the supervisor. I think it's a good idea that it's someone from the board because they're up on the issues and they know what's going on in our town. So I think it's a good thing. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Okay, no other comments? And uh, I'd like to move to close this public hearing. Second. Barbara, you the council? Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgeway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Supervisor? Aye. The next order of business is local law number uh, three of 1995. The, the title is Department of Public Works. Again, for those who don't have a copy of the local laws written, I'll read it. Uh, Barb did copy that on the second page, if you don't want to read it off. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. It's on the agenda, right? Yeah, it's right on your local law sheet here, uh, resolution sheet. Okay, section one, Department of Public Works established merger of existing highway department and transfer of functions. A, there is hereby created and established the Department of Public Works which will have the powers, functions, and duties set forth in section two of this local law. B, the highway department is hereby merged into and, and the functions, powers, and duties of said department shall be transferred to and become vested in the Department of Public Works. Section two, functions, powers, and duties of the Department of Public Works. The Department of Public Works shall have and exercise such functions, powers, and duties as may be prescribed by the town board, including but not limited to charge of and supervision over a, the care, maintenance, and repair and construction of all town roads, bridges, culverts, sewers, drains, sidewalks, parking areas, driveways, public ways, and all other works of public works of the town. B, the care, construction, operation, maintenance, and repair of all town buildings, structures, capital facilities, and improvements, solid waste man management facilities, and other physical property of the town. C, the care, maintenance, repair, operation, and installation of all plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and electrical systems contained in or appurtenant to any town building structure or facility. D, the care, maintenance, repair, and construction of all town parks, lawns, and playgrounds. And E, the care, maintenance, repair, and operation of such vehicles, tools, supplies, and other personal property as the town board may authorize. Section three, superintendent of public works, qualifications, and duties. The office of the superintendent of public works is hereby created and such office shall be held by the town highway superintendent. B, the superintendent of public works shall be the head of the Department of Public Works and shall have and exercise the authority, direction, general supervision, and control over the department, including but not limited to the power and authority to appoint and remove officers and employees of the department. 
all of the powers and duties of the town superintendent of highways as now or hereafter prescribed by law and such additional and related duties as may be prescribed by general or special law town local law or town resolution section four department or deputy superintendent of public works a the town board may by resolution create and establish one office of deputy superintendent of public works which shall be in the exempt class of the civil service B, the Deputy Superintendent of Public Works shall, when and to the extent authorized by the Superintendent of Public Works, have the power and authority to act generally for and in place of the Superintendent of Public Works. C, the appointment of a Deputy Superintendent of Public Works shall be made by the Superintendent of Public Works with the consent of the Town Board. That's the local law as written, and I will now open the floor for comments on this local law. The purpose? Yeah. Um, well, Bob, I've discussed it with you before, and that was my concern that certain things that needed to be done for the town could only be done by a department like yours. There's no other resource that we have that can do it. Um, I was hoping that you would uh, uh, stick to your word last year when you told me that you would do certain things relevant to the town park. Uh, they didn't get done for whatever reason. Well, didn't uh, done. What didn't get done? Uh, the repairs of the road over there, the parking area. Mm, that was pretty rough shape. Well, but it didn't get done till the end of the summer when the summer season's over. Well, that's right. That's right, and you weren't obligated to do it. I realize that, and that's why we need something like this so we have someone that is obligated to take care of these things and can't say, well, that's not my job. We need someone that can do that. We can't just rely on whenever someone can get to it. If we're going to have a park, if we're going to have cemeteries that we take care of and so on, we need to know that someone's going to be available. It started, it all supposed to be donated by the industry and maintained by volunteers. And you established it. That was an idea we were hoping for, Bob, yes. It didn't work out that way. And it may work out that way in the future. But unfortunately, right now, that's not the case. So that's the reason for this, is to get someone that would be responsible for it. All right. I have a question. Uh, people ask me that if this Be elected, or will it just be appointed? No, absolutely not. Uh, that would require a referendum. That would have to go on the ballot, and the people of this town would have to vote for that type of change. So he would still be an elected official? He would still be an elected official. His title would change from superintendent of highways to superintendent of uh, public works. Yes? I've been here a few years. Could, could and I think name, please? that. Uh, I know who you are. The highway you superintendent you? has done the job that he was supposed to do, and that's who I vote for. And I don't think he should be dictated by the town board. When the, when the highway superintendent doesn't do things that we think is right, we vote him out. And I don't think that the town board knows more than the highway superintendent what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done. And I think it should remain as it has been for the last... 60 years that I can remember. Okay, thank you for your comments. Could you state your name for the record, please? I beg your pardon? Could you state your name for the record, please? Corporudo, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, my name is Eric Egler. I live at RD6, and I rise in strong opposition to this proposal. I think that this is a thoroughly bad idea. The creation of a Department of Public Works clearly does not represent what the highway superintendent was elected to do. First and foremost was to take care of the highways. This has been a rough year out here, and the highways have been in great shape. To, this, to reallocate highway department funds for the use of a park that most of the residents in the town of Alney are not going to use, that we don't need, and to further whatever agenda comes before the board, smacks of political cronyism. And like I said, I rise in strong opposition to this proposal. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Alan, Alan Kester, I live in County Route 45. This is a pretty good uh, job description. Is there a job description that exists now describing the duties of the elected highway superintendent? Uh, I believe in state law there is. I don't believe that the town has their own special duties that are designated, uh, at least none that I'm aware of. Well, who gets to determine what the job of the highway superintendent is? 
if it's, I, I don't think that it's just the highway superintendent of the highways. There's other things to be done. There's a whole bunch of other things to be done as outlined in this new uh, resolution. It would seem to me that you, know, you don't need a DPW necessarily, but somebody needs to to uh, get across the point that the, the, the grass around here, as I recall a couple of years ago, wasn't mowed. And somebody has to... I don't know if that's your job or not. Do you know if that's your job? No, it's not my, part of my job, but I've done it for 12 years. Well, how can we make it part of his job as a highway superintendent? Who writes the job description? I, I'm not sure whether this is an answer or not. I don't think it's Max of cronyism. I just think that there's some, there are some things that are have nothing to do with the highway that need to be done by the town. Uh, such as the cemeteries. They take care of the cemeteries, don't they? Mm -hmm. If you want to say he, all he does is take care of the highways and that's all we want him to do, then who's going to take care of the cemeteries that the town has accepted to care of? Maybe you need something else on the budget. I don't know, but uh, something needs to be done. I don't know if this is the answer, but something needs to be done. Something needs to be done to say, here's what your job is, I don't know who wrote it. Maybe you wrote your own job description. State of New York writes it. State of New York writes it? But the cemetery's been tended to, the lawn's been tended to, and I didn't know what I told them I would do. Well, I understand that, but, but, well, I guess it's, you know, like somebody has snow in their driveway and they hire somebody to come and plow it out and they don't get there. <laughs> Whenever you need to get your car out. I don't know if that's an uh, appropriate uh, uh, analogy or not, but, I don't know what needs to be done. I, I don't think we need to buy a bigger whip. I don't think that's the solution. But something needs to be done. Sir, Larry Raleigh, Miller Road. Uh, I'm in opposition to this for a couple of reasons. First of all, we just went through an election where Bob Kirkin apparently is doing his job pretty well. He was voted in a very strong margin. Uh, secondly, Balmy has had Bob and his predecessors, we've always been known for our roads. We've had great roads. Uh, it's kind of a common joke when you leave Fulton and hit Balmy, the roads were clear. Uh, I don't understand why you want to mess with something that's working well. It's one of the few things you've got out here that's working well. Leave it alone. You are right, you have some other responsibilities, and you should be looking for some other responsibilities. And then eventually you're going to have to have somebody to take care of water districts and sewer districts and different things. Maybe you should have a DPW, but it certainly shouldn't be the highway department. Uh, I think the boulders spoke. Uh, you, you've got a guy doing a great job on the highway department, and now you're kind of holding up the fact that he did a few things that he could fit in, and now it's like, well, if he can do this, he ought to be able to do that, he ought to be able to do that. Uh, I think you've got two issues at stake. I think you have a functioning highway department that, that's doing as, as good or better than any one of his predecessors. Our roads are good, our roads are clear. Uh, I don't understand whether it be political or what, why you want to mess with that. The, uh, the park has mixed emotions with a lot of different people, but I'm strongly against you mixing it. If you need a DPW, then create a DPW, but not, don't pull that department apart. Thank you. Yes. Matt McCormick, I live on the Hawk Road. Uh, this deputy superintendent of public works, is that going to create a new paid position? In no, town? no. Do we have a deputy highway superintendent? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. We do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Yes, sir. Uh, Gene Sullivan from Maple Ave. And uh, when I had initially heard about this, I had some concerns. Um, and, and I still do. I made some phone calls over the weekend to check with various people throughout the third election district here in Bonnie to see if I was way out of touch, if anybody could shed any light on the concerns I had. I could find no one that, uh, that supported this proposal. Um, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And, and that's the way that people seem to feel when I spoke with them on the phone. Uh, they're all real happy with the, the job that, that Bob's been doing and the areas that he's been responsible for. He's carried out those duties to the fullest. No one has any complaints uh, with regard to that. 
I, I see and I can find no one uh, who saw a reason to change that. Thank you. Anyone else care to speak on this issue? Okay. Um, I'll move to close this public hearing then. Second. Second it. Okay. Barbara, you pull the council. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgeway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Supervisor? Aye. Okay, we'll move it now to our regularly scheduled town board meeting. Barb, let the record show the same members of the uh, order in attendance. First order of business is uh, He would stay and wait until we discuss it. Excuse me. First order of business approval of minutes. Resolution 95 222. Move that the minutes for November 9th, 1995 regular town board meeting and November 14th, 1995 special meeting, having been distributed, be approved without reading. I'll move it. Second. Any corrections or additions to the minutes? Okay, Barbara, you pull the council. Aye. Mr. Ridgeway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warner? I'll uh, vote aye on the regular town board meeting and see I wasn't present at the November 14th special meeting. I'll abstain. Supervisor Aye. Uh, next resolution, 95-223, transfer of funds. Uh, move that the supervisor be authorized to transfer funds from accounts A, 1420.4 attorney in the amount of $1,892.53 and A, 1355.4 assessors in the amount of $2,658.50 for a total of $4,551.03 to accounts A, uh, 1450.4 elections contractual in the amount of $389.40 and A, 3310.4, traffic control contractual in the amount of $191.89. Uh, A, 1355.2, assessor's equipment in the amount of $2,658.50. And A, 7140.4, playgrounds and recreation in the amount of $1,311.24 for a total of $4,551.03. Would someone like to move that? So moved. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. Start with, is there any way to break any of this down? Uh, I can in, in see with way? elections going over on contractual there to pay, make payroll. That's what that one's for, yeah. Uh, traffic control, this has got to do with signs, right? Mm-hmm. There was quite a few thousand dollars in that budget, and we're $191 over, and we're taking it out of a general account and moving it over to highway? Well, it's, it's from a general account normally. The traffic control signs, unfortunately, do come out of a general account, not a highway account. But we Why? had quite a few thousand dollars in there for signs. Yes, we did. And I have an answer for you, except our highway superintendent left the room, so I, I don't know if he's going to be back, but uh, he's not here to answer that question, which is why I've said for the last two years we should have our highway superintendent here, like every other elected official, throughout the meeting to answer questions, but he has not done that. Um, it's just a fact. I'm not being political. Um, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to that, Jess. The other thing is assessor's equipment. I see this bill surfaced the other night in there for a new computer. Mm -hmm. There's no money in their equipment fund, right? There was no money um, um, budgeted in their equipment fund for this year. Uh, this money is being transferred from their contractual to the equipment fund to make the purchase. Um, apparently it's something they need. They, you know. We just updated their other computer. That's right. I wasn't aware of it until you were the other night, but uh, the purchase was made. They need it apparently. And, uh, uh, something wrong with the other one? No, nothing's wrong with the other one. They need a, a more upgraded computer than the, what they had to do the programming that's going to be required in the coming year. Um, the state is coming out uh, with a new software program that utilizes Windows 95 and it requires a, a faster computer with more memory and so on. And that was the reason that they decided to use the money for that. Do we still have this other computer? Yes, we do. I asked him it? about sharing it with our um, uh, tax collector this year. He said that he wants to hand it for a little while because all the information that they have now is on that hard drive and until they get time to transfer it over and learn the ropes with the new one, 
they'd like to keep the, the one that they have until that time. So, of course, her tax season starts in a few weeks, so I don't mm -hmm. know if she's going to get to use it in this coming year or not. Okay, playgrounds and rec. Okay, playgrounds and rec, that $1,311 is the difference that it cost us for the pavilion over and above the 1600 and something that we had in the account. Uh, our rec committee was gracious enough to donate part of this cost, which uh, later in the evening we're going to be receiving a check from them uh, for $800. Um, the reason it went over by five, and, and this was something that they had agreed to initially, so it's, that's no surprise. The surprise is the 1311, and the reason we're $500 over on that is because initially, as I uh, told everyone, we had a donation of five sets of trusses for the, the roof of the pavilion. Uh, as it turned out, those trusses weren't in very good shape and we couldn't use them, so we had to buy new ones. So that's the difference in the cost of about $500 for the additional trusses. And there was a few other items that they had to have as well. Um, so, does that answer your questions? Yes. And there is money in the assessor's contractual to pay for the computer, so they can in, transfer it. In their contractual, right. Good enough. Right. No, it's not good enough, Jim. Well. No. It, it, we've we've done it in other areas, Jess. We we did it for the town clerk. We've done it for others. We've transferred monies around to update computers and to buy software. I see uh -huh. no reason why we shouldn't do it for the assessors. I'll have another voice when we vote on it. All right. Well, I think the only thing that we're a little bothered by is the fact they didn't come to us and tell us they're going to be doing this, and it just happened. And normally, we would expect our departments to spend this kind of money to run it by us first. Um, that's the only problem I have with it. But uh, any other? Uh, discussion from the board on this? Okay, any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? Okay, um, Barbie Pole, the council. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgeway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warner? Uh, yes, I'm going to vote aye. But I'll tell you, I'm going to have some resolutions to make these department heads responsible for the money they're spending, and it will come to the town board before they start spending money. And we're going to just transfer in funds all the time. It's got to be a halt to it. We're starting to act like our bigger governments. Uh, I'm going to vote aye also. There is a procurement policy that this board has established, and uh, um, possibly uh, uh, our chairman of our assessment unit isn't aware of it, and we'll have to make him aware of that. But there is a policy that this town board does have that says they can only spend up to so many dollars without getting board approval. Uh, I thought it was 3000 though. No, that's the one for the highway department. Okay. Highway department is different. Okay, because usually they go by what the state bid type thing is which is 7,000, I believe, and we've lowered that to 3,000 to make our highway superintendent uh, more accountable with us. Um, so, but the town in general, the procurement policy, I don't believe is anywhere near 3,000. Well, I thought we'd done it the same for all the departments. So. I could be wrong. I, I didn't look at it myself today, but, uh, but that's something that needs to be addressed, I guess. And we do have a policy, and if, if that is the case, then they're well within the limit, so they did nothing wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Next resolution, 95-224, payment of bills. Move that voucher number 360 through 397 in the amount of $50,577.26, general fund and vouchers 270 through 290 in the amount of $12,534.56, highway fund. Having been audited, the supervisor is hereby authorized to pay these bills from the funds available. Would someone like to move that? So moved. Any discussion or comments from the board on this resolution? No, I, uh, at the time I did not sign that bill. Uh, it will be signed and voted on this time. There was another one I didn't sign until I asked the highway superintendent. That was on a uh, almost $3,000 on a sander until I found out that the old sander was broke and he had to get a new one to put on the small truck so that they could plow or sand the small areas. And I signed that bill, but I hadn't signed it until I talked to the highway superintendent what this sander was. Okay. I would call the council, please. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgeway? Aye. 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 
communications, I have one from New York State Association of Town Superintendents of Highways. Uh, dear members, as you read this letter, the voters have made their choice. Now we must all carry on the best we know how. As we prepare for the winter season, we also must start to prepare for the future of the Consolidated Highway Improvement Program, commonly known as CHIPS, which is scheduled to end in 1996. The Transportation Industry Committee is supporting the need for secure and adequate funding for local governments and transportation. At the October meeting of the Officers and Executive Committee, a resolution in support of the committee's efforts was adopted. The Officers and Committee would like to ask that you ask your official boards to adopt a resolution in support of the committee's efforts. A sample resolution is enclosed, which can be used as a guideline or used as is. A letter of support from our local uh, commercial members would also be of help and will be forwarded with the resolution. The resolution should be sent to this office at the above address. Uh, the resolution will then be mailed to the Transportation Industry Committee, and they in turn will send the resolution to the proper people. Uh, if you're not aware of it, what the CHIPS funding is, is uh, state revenue sharing that we get back to the towns uh, to help uh, defray the cost of road maintenance and, and uh, highway improvements. And uh, the state is talking about doing away with that next year. So uh, later in the meeting, we're going to have a resolution to um, uh, adopt this uh, model resolution in support of the effort to keep the CHIPS program flowing. Okay. Um, and the thing that is, this uh, amounts to around $66,000 a year that we get paid mm -hmm. through. Yeah, it's a New big York chunk State, of money. The chips program, and if we lose it, it's basically another sixty-six thousand dollars that the taxpayers got to come up with. <coughs> Local taxpayers. Okay, next uh, item on the agenda is committee reports, uh, planning board. Barb, did you have a uh, report yeah, on that? Kevin is at uh, taking an ex exam at uh, Oswego and, and he got this report. December 1995. The planning board held its December meeting on Wednesday, December 6th. The board continued its public hearing regarding the site plan request by the Seneca Hill Medical Complex. Uh, representatives for approval of phase one of their development. This would involve the infrastructure work to the site in the construction of 120 bed skilled nursing home in uh, 38,000 uh, square feet outpatient facility. Several residents asked questions but no person spoke against granting approval to this project. The project also received support from the Swigo County Planning Board. As the project, project progressed, several areas of importance to the residents of the area were discussed and resolved. They included a water supply option that will result in an extension to the existing Seneca Hill Water District. Not only will this put a large user on the system, resulting in significant increase in collected fees, to help fund improvements. As part of this extension, improvements to the existing pump station will be made. A new station will be installed and a water tank erected on the site. This should result in a significant improvement to water pressure. And number two, a, wa a sewer line will run across the Minetto Bridge and up County Route 45 to the entrance roadway. Significant capacity will exist <clears throat> for residents for future commercial establishments to utilize the system. And three, an extensive recreation trail system will be constructed with a parking and small picnic area. This will allow for residents to walk, bike, jog, or cross-country ski. Many other areas were discussed and reviewed. All in all, we found the developers to be very cooperative and a pleasure to work with. We hope to complete site plan review in January. We also reviewed a proposed Spataro zone change request for approximately 11.5 acres of land located on the Owens Road on the north side, just west of 481 overpass. The re they requested it be rezoned from industrial to agricultural. 
The county did not oppose the request. We passed a resolution recommending approval. The town board now needs to hold a public hearing and make a final determination. We hope to complete review of the proposed Baldwin Heights subdivision, but due to concerns made by the developer regarding notification and his inability to attend the meeting, we felt it to be in the best interest of all concerned to hold off for a final determination until our January 3rd meeting. Wishing you all a happy holiday. <coughs> Kevin Conley, Chairperson. Thank you, Barb. Zoning. subject you said that they decided they didn't want to make a recommendation and that they agreed to just submit a letter to the board right. I asked them um, if anybody was interested and there was one member of the board Bob Foster was interested as well and um, Mr. Winfield thought that we should make the board should have the right to make the recommendation and I said they're in their power if they want to do that so John Nicholson, John Nicholson said that he was not reapplying he didn't feel he wanted to make a recommendation Jim didn't want to make a recommendation because Barb and I were both candidates. We couldn't make a recommendation. And then Dave said, well, that he wasn't going to make the recommendation on his own. So therefore, they did not want to make a recommendation. So they, it was suggested that letters just be submitted to the town board and then the town board can make their decision. 
Okay, and I, I was told a different story, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I was told that Dave Winfield made a re uh, motion to nominate someone for a position. Not. He did not make, he didn't discuss any nominations at all. He didn't attempt to make a nomination at all. No, I, I, we, I went through and said, do you want to make a nomination? And everyone said, no. Dave, did you make a nomination? No. Okay. And it's part of the minutes, by the record. Okay. Did you say that uh, if he were to make a nomination before he made one, apparently he didn't make one, uh, that it couldn't happen because you couldn't vote and Barb couldn't vote because you were both, both vying for that seat? and that John Nagelsmith couldn't vote because he's not going to be here next year. No, Did you I tell them that? No, what I said is Barb and I could not vote because we're both candidates. Well, that's not true. I mean, you voted for yourself in the election. I'm sure Barb voted for herself in the election. Why would it be any different on your board? You can vote for yourself in this democracy as far as I know. Well, I was not going to vote, and Barb didn't say that she was going to vote, and there was no vote taken, and it was the consensus of the board, Howard, that <coughs> in the best interest of everyone on the board so we could all work together without any controversy next year, that the, the most proper thing to do would be to submit letters. No board member wanted to make a recommendation and publish it. Okay, well, I was told different. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. But I was also told that you told them that they couldn't vote and you just confirmed that, which they could have. But I don't feel like I could vote, and I'm sure Barb can't vote because we are candidates. And usually if you're a candidate for a position on the board, you usually don't vote. No, you could. You could. If someone makes a resolution to nominate somebody, Anyone on that board, including the person that's nominated, can vote for themselves. I mean, it's well, it was left that it was the best interest that nobody would vote, and okay. they, I would ask each and every one of them if they wanted to be chairman, and they all said no, except Barb. She said that she was interested. So I asked if somebody wanted to make a nomination. No one wanted to make a nomination. So without a nomination, you can't have a vote. Okay, fine. I just I heard it differently, and I just wanted to make sure it was straight. And uh, the other thing too. Um, I had a request from uh, a new board member asking about the hours that uh, the zoning board puts in. Um, if you remember in 1990, you, you were the one that presented the legislation to the town board at the time that you thought that the zoning board members should have at least 10 hours a year and there's a resolution, a local law actually, that states that. And uh, they would like a copy of everyone's uh, hours that they've had this past year. Uh, to see if they have complied and, and everyone has their hours. So if you could uh, pull your board and get those copies to me on Monday, I'd appreciate it. Um, Howard, it's okay. 10 hours the first year and five hours every year after that. Okay, whatever it is, we just need to be updated on who's done what and how many hours they've got. Okay? Thank you. Uh, did you have a question, Mayor? No, I have a comment to make. I was at the building board. Uh, okay, could you save it till the end in public comment? Because we don't usually do that right now. Thanks. Thanks. Um, Okay, next uh, item on the agenda, code enforcement. Dan? Dan. Uh, we issued permits for two homes, one mobile home, one garage, and one uh, wood stove. Uh, for a total of five permits, a uh, total amount in fees collected was $438. We issued four certificates of occupancy, one certificate of compliance. We did 12 construction inspections, three fire safety inspections, and one housing complaint. For total of 16 inspections. Thank you, Dan. Uh, dog control. Jerry? Uh, we received 87 uh, calls or complaints. Dr. Dell, three dogs, two dogs were redeemed. Uh, I got a lot, I picked up 11 dogs this month. There's four dogs at the kennel right now. Eight dogs were reported lost. Two dog bites. We traveled uh, about 370 miles into a dog truck. I had uh, two dogs euthanized. One was on Maple Ave. That was just thrown out of the car. And it uh, broke both my legs in that one. Another one was banded in a gravel bed on any road, and that one was beyond saving. And over on Sloan Drive, we picked up five cats one night. It was out in the woods in a box. And now we're not supposed to pick them up, but we found the person who uh, would take them in. So that was uh, yeah. that's it. Thank you. You've done a fantastic job the last two years, Jerry, and, and on behalf of the board, I want to thank you very much for that. Uh, I think we all should be very appreciative of what Jerry's done because um, he's run a really tight ship over there and done a very, very good job of, of taking care of our situation with dogs in the town of Olney. Uh While we're on the subject of the uh, dog control, um, I think many of you know that uh, we've had a, a woman here in the town who has... Uh, taking it upon herself to adopt out the dogs that we pick up so that they don't have to be euthanized and so on. Um, 
And as a matter of fact, in the last two years, she's taken care of over 80 dogs that were set to be probably euthanized because of not being able to find homes for them. And at this time, I'd like to call her up front here, uh, Gloria Raymond. The certificate of award reads, may it be known that this certificate has been presented to Gloria Raymond for outstanding achievement in her unselfish efforts in finding homes for over 80 stray dogs in the year 1994 and 1995, and no charge to the town, sparing their lives and saving the taxpayers thousands of dollars. Jerry said was that he wasn't supposed to um, pick up cats. It's not that he's not supposed to. It isn't part of his job. When he did it, it was just out of the goodness of his heart. I think that's a big difference. Okay, next uh, recreation. Sue? We have 51 children and adults attend the trip to the Syracuse Crunch Hockey game on November 12th. University basketball game. And I'd like to thank all the chaperones who attended and helped out for both trips. It was a nice time. Thank you, Sue. We were hoping for a, uh, a lot more uh, attendance at that SU game. We thought it'd be an opportune time for parents to drop their kids off at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and, and let us take them to the SU ball game at the Dome and then come back at 11 o'clock at night and pick them up after they'd done their Christmas shopping. But unfortunately, a lot of people didn't take advantage of that. Uh, it's too bad because you don't see this type of thing going on in too many communities. And, you know, I, I thank you for that trip, Sue, and I think we've got a fine recreation program. I'm sure it'll continue. Um, while we're on the subject of recreation, I mentioned before that, uh, that the uh, recreation committee for the town of Balney, who has been having fundraisers for the last six years, um, agreed to donate some money to the effort to build the pavilion, which we now have up over there at the uh, park. Uh, the Neighborhood-Based Alliance uh, has a program called uh, Pride and Community where they've hired a number of people who are out of work uh, to do odd jobs for different municipalities in any way they, they could. And we uh, agreed to have them help us build this pavilion. And they completed it within a couple of weeks after we uh, uh, made the agreement with them. And no charge to the town, by the way. Uh, all we had to do was pay for the materials, which is what the bill that we paid tonight was for. Uh, but we were about $800 short of the goal. So uh, the Recreation Committee, which Sue Roik is president of, is uh, going to be donating a check to us. So I'll step down there again. And another photo opportunity.
Supervisor Board and Residents, John Barlett, who writes a newsletter concerning cemeteries and information for people searching for their roots, has contacted me and will be checking on information that's available in our files. The storm Tuesday, December 12th, made both of us decide to stay home. Uh, for the same reason, the new glass for the old case that we moved in there uh, did not make it to the office either. And I have moved again some of the things in the office to try to find the best working arrangement. Thank you, Fern. Um, highway, Barb, do you have a report for Bob who's not here? Yes, I do. Uh, this is for November 1995. Two days driveways, eight days machine maintenance, two days stump grinding, 12 days plowing and sanding, three days cleaning beaver dams. The wages for November 1995, $26,925.94. Repair and material cost, $12,534.56. Total expenditures for November of 95, $39,460.50. And that's submitted by Bob Kerfein, Highway Superintendent. Thank you, Barbara. You're welcome. Um, it may seem to some that I'm picking on Bob Kerfin at times, and that's not the case at all. I uh, feel very strongly that someone that's elected to his position that handles more money than I do in a year should be here to answer to the taxpayers of this town if they have any questions about his department, especially this town board if they have a question. And he should do it publicly, not behind the backroom doors like some politicians prefer to do things. Uh, as you know, I prefer to do everything right out here on the floor, uh, and I've done it that way the six years I've been here. Um, but. Uh, that's the reason I bring up certain things, like he should be here to read his own report. He should be here to address a resolution that we're going to be talking about a little bit later in this meeting. He's left for the evening. Why? I don't know. Uh, but I think that the taxpayers are the ones that have to hold him accountable. And if they don't know what he's doing, then they can't hold him accountable, which is why I bring it up. Well, Howard, I would, if Bob not here to speak for himself, I certainly would speak for That's him. his problem, isn't it, Jeff? No, it is not his problem. He's out doing his job right now. Oh, he doesn't do it he, 12 he months is, out of the he year. He's doing it right tonight, and that's Possibly. the night that you're making this an issue. I've so said I, this for six years, well, Jim, and maybe, it's not tonight. Maybe you have, but you are uh, using this as a, as a uh, your last, your swan song. My last hurrah, right? yeah, that's my last it's opportunity, last, Jim. It's your last hurrah. Mm -hmm. Well, I want everyone to know that. job right now. I, I don't have any complaints the, about the man's job. I've the, never criticized what Bob Kirkin has done as a town superintendent as far as these roads. He's done an excellent job. He's very capable. That's what he's hired to do. That's he's also elected. That's Jim, he elected. He's elected and he's responsible to the taxpayers of this town. And that's what they elected okay? to do. Absolutely. So okay. he doesn't have to answer to him once he's elected. Is that what you're saying, Jim? I'm saying that he answers it to him every two years when he is re-elected. Okay. Okay. Um, old business. Is there any old business? Okay. Hearing none, we'll move on to resolutions and discussion. First resolution, 95-225, local law number two, deputy supervisor position. Uh, I've already read the, the resolution, our local law. We've also heard public comment. So at this time, I'd like to move the local law. I'll second it. Any discussion or comments from the board on this local law? Absolutely. Howard, for, you've said for six years you've been a member of this board, mm -hmm. either as supervisor or as a councilman. You've had an opportunity to ha bring this law forth. You actually did this or acted when Don Kitts was supervisor in a very, in a, in a way that I thought was questionable, but you did it anyway. 
when Don appointed a, a deputy supervisor and you you got him to rescind it and then you overrode him and he never did have a deputy. But you've had six years to, to do this. Why at the end of your term are you bringing this forward now? Why now? Why not two years ago? Why not a year ago? Why not before the general election? Why now? That's my only question. Well, you said it, Jim. I brought it up uh, the first day in office six years ago. I brought it up. The only Why? thing I did wrong, Jim, was I made it a resolution, not a local law. That's the only thing I did wrong, and I wasn't aware that it had to be a, a local law to be effective. You just okay. became aware of that. I just became aware of it, yes, because I was stepping down, and I don't think that the future uh, generations of this town board are going to believe the same way I feel about that situation, that I think that the, the deputy supervisor should be a member of this board. Uh, and so in order to protect this town and make sure that someone is a member of this board that's going to be the deputy that's going to run this town in the absence of the elected supervisor, instead of bringing someone in from East Hoboken to be the deputy who we don't know, who we don't have never worked with. Uh, and that was the case with Don Kitts because the man just moved into town. Nobody knew him. And that's why we did what we did at that time. As far as I'm concerned, Howard, it's a supervisor's appointment. It is. State law says the supervisor's appointment. That's right, and this doesn't change that. that, that it certainly does. No, it doesn't. It, it only says that the, the choice has to come from the town board. Then, then it is a taking away of that choice, and it's worked for the year. All it the limits the choice, Jim. Change. It limits the choice. It well, doesn't take it away. It limits Well, as far as I'm concerned, it takes it away. And it gives it, gives it now to someone that it's a possibility a supervisor might not feel comfortable working with. Uh, well, he won't be here, Jim. It'll be some members of the board that'll be here. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. And that's why I think that this should have been done before. And I think that it was done before. It was done six was. years ago. Dave McFarland changed it around when he got elected to how he wanted it. I changed it back Thank when I got elected. Only thing I didn't do is make it a local law, which is what I'm doing now because I just found out. Uh, in the last month here that the only way to do it and, and make it effective and valid is to be a local law Okay, and that's why I'm doing it now because I wasn't aware of it before I would have done it that way to begin with now, Okay, if the rest of the board doesn't agree with me, then it'll get voted down. Oh, I'm sure, they, I'm sure they're going to vote it down <laughs> Well, Jim, if that's the way it is the way it is. That's why we have a five-member board Okay, any other questions or comments from this board? Additional questions or comments from the public on this local law? Why are you doing this now? Why, why don't you wait for the next supervisor to take care of that? I just why explained that. I just explained that. No, why, why, why not? I just explained it. Do you want me to go through it again? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I did this six years ago yeah. because I felt it was the way it should be done. Okay. okay? My only thing I did wrong was I made it a, a resolution, which a resolution doesn't have as much weight as a local law. Okay. Two years later, a new supervisor comes in, changes it back. Fine. He has that right, and the board has the right to give him what he wants. They did. Now, I got elected two years ago. I decided it was appropriate that the member, uh, the uh, deputy supervisor should be a member of this town board for the reasons I stated, and I changed it back. Now, we have a new supervisor coming in, a new board. I had some discussions with some people about how they felt, uh, if they wanted to continue with this, and the general consensus was, we think you're right that it should be a member of the board. I made a motion last month to have a public hearing. We had the public hearing. We heard public comment. I'm making a resolution now to do what I did six years ago, only do it the proper way and make it sound and valid. In two years, we can't hold you accountable again at the poll. Hold me accountable? No. Why, 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 why do you care about holding me accountable? I'm gone. If we, the citizens, don't like this idea, then you're gone. And it, it isn't the citizens' choice for this. It's the, the town board's choice. You elect a new town board if you don't like what they do. Simple as that. That's politics. That's democracy. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's two members that will be sitting here next year. They can vote this down if they choose to do so. It's up to them. Charlie. Charlie Smart, so far. Um, regardless of timing, um, there's a lot of smoke being blown around about the choice of the supervisor. I believe strongly that, that the supervisor is an elected position, that the deputy supervisor should also be an elected position. The only elected position that would make any sense would be other people elected to the town board. The town board um, has to make decisions on all of the laws and issues coming before the town. Uh, it only makes sense that an elected town board member 
who is present for that and knows what's going on throughout the year should be the one to take over in the supervisor's absence. Um, I believe it's, it's a sensible law in uh, practice. It's generally been followed without it, but not always. And I do believe that it's important that, uh, that this gives the people some input into who's sitting on the board and who is their deputy supervisor, and I, I think it's overdue. Uh, uh, one point before it goes any further, um, I think there's a misunderstanding about what a local law does. Um, anything that's done by resolution can be changed by resolution. Anything that's done by local law can be changed by local law. If in the future another town board does not want this to stand this way, it, they could pass another local law that would change it. But there would be a public hearing requirement, right. which isn't required for a resolution. So that's why it's a better way to do it, because it gives you, the people, a chance to come and comment on it and change the board's mind. You don't get that with a resolution. Okay. Well, uh, Walter Howard, uh, Baldwin Road. Uh, I'd like to say I'm not in favor of any appointed positions. I think that's one of the root of all evils of the politics. Okay? Uh, I feel that it should be a member of the board that we elect that should be the deputy supervisor of this town. And uh, we put it up there. We know we are. That's who I would want. I don't want any appointments. Okay. Unfortunately, the law doesn't allow us to do that, Walt, because the, the statute doesn't say that we can appoint that position or elect that position. Okay, uh, we have to follow some of the laws of the state. Unfortunately, we do have home rule law, but it doesn't allow us to counter something like that. Unfortunately, so it, it'll always be an appointed position until the state changes it. Okay. Um, Susie. Catherine Reynolds, and I got to agree. It should be a member of the board. I wouldn't want some stranger coming in there and setting there. Somebody that we have voted for should sit up there in that capacity. And I think you're right on target, Howard, and the rest of the board. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Alan? Alan, Kessner County Route 45. I agree uh, with uh, the pros here. Charlie had some good comments, and the lady here had a good comment. I would also point out that if it's one of you people, if it's one of the elected uh, council members, we're not going to have to clear out a room back here and put a name on the door and uh, waste <laughs> office space like was done previously. Any other comments on this resolution? Okay, Barb, will you poll the council, please? Councilor Pierce? Aye. Councilor Ridgeway? No. Councilor Smart? Aye. Councilor Warner? Aye. Supervisor Lewis. Aye. Next resolution, 95-226, local law number three, Department of Public Works. Uh, I've read the uh, local law to everyone. Uh, I'll move the resolution. Uh, now we're, missing a little, we're missing a little section at the end, but that's okay. We know what we got to do there. Seconded that? Uh, I haven't had a second yet. Does anyone want to second that resolution or, or motion? I want to second it for discussion. Okay. Uh, Councilor Smart? Aye. Okay. Questions and comments from the board? Are you really serious, Howard, when you want the highway superintendent to now be charged with the care, construction, operation, maintenance, and repair of all town buildings? Is that no, I'm not serious about that, Jim. That was part of a general resolution that we can modify if you so desire. I, I didn't really intend uh, for Bob to take care of the plumbing and heating in this building. No, that's in there because that's part of a general resolution when you adopt the Department of Public Works, and we can start uh, picking away at some of this stuff if you prefer. I that's don't. Certain. I don't have a problem eliminating that one. I certainly think a lot of the duties that you cited here certainly do not in any way, shape, or manner relate to a uh, Department of Public or a Highway Superintendent. That's right. These relate to a Department of Public Works. That's, that is correct. And if the town I board... Like to, I would move to table this resolution for the next until the next board uh, has an opportunity to look at it. Well, I would hope the board wouldn't do that because th this is a board that's had to deal with the situation. A new board will not learn for a couple more years why we, we're at this point. Uh, you know, I, if the rest I of the board feels the way you do, that's fine. I believe a motion to table is non-debatable and it takes a second. 
Is there a second on that motion? No, I don't hear a second, Jim. So okay, that's anything fine. else you want to? If you want to work on eliminating some of these things, I don't have a problem with that. The reason I brought this up, as I explained at our last meeting, was that we have a town park that we need to have taken care of. Also, we have uh, the lawn here at the town hall that needs to be taken care of. We have certain maintenance things that need to be done around the town that need to be taken care of. That The only way we can do that is through our highway department. We have no other source unless we subcontract to uh, a private company to do those things, and that is not cost effective, as you know, Jim. Um, I also relate a story to everyone here that when I took over this seat two years ago and summer came and the grass needed mowing, uh, it wasn't getting done. And I asked why, and the highway department, who Bob told you, had done it for 12 years, all of a sudden decided he wasn't going to do it. He was too busy to do it. Now, do you want to call that politically motivated? I don't know. I'm not going to accuse anybody of anything, but I don't know why that happened. But all I know is I came in here one day and found a tractor in the hallway for me to mow the lawn. Uh, now, those are the kind of things that we have to face, or someone else may have to face, if we don't have specific duties for our highway department to take care of that need to be done around here. Now, Jim. Howard, did you, you've talked about this for two years. Do I understand that you just got all the data last month? No. No, oh. I, gave, I gave Bob a chance. If you remember last year at our budget meeting, I said to Bob, Bob, you know, a lot of things didn't get done this past year that you told us you would take care of. Do we have to make you a DPW to do that? And he said, no, you don't. I will do it. I said, if you tell me you're going to do it, then fine. I won't even consider it. I'll give you another chance. Let's see what happens next year. As you know, nothing was done in that park until late August. The summer was over. The kids didn't get to utilize the facility. The parking wasn't done. The uh, road was in disrepair. Uh, now, again, I don't know if it's politically motivated. I'm not going to accuse, but what do you do, Jim? What do you, what's the answer? I believe that when we did this, that we said it was going to be volunteer. We said that it was going to be taken care of. We, we said we'd like we to make to it all volunteer. We didn't say when, that we were going to include this as a part of the highway department's uh, responsibilities. That isn't what we said. That isn't what people didn't elect Bob Kerfine to, uh, to mow parks. They didn't elect me to either. So who's going to do it, Jim? Well, I think that if we, if we establish the park, maybe we ought to have created a, uh, a group that would do it. Or we park. did. We did, Jim, which you cre creatively destroyed two years so ago, I as you know. No, I did not create it. Weren't you uh, recreation for two no, years on the was. day of And what did you do? We went through. What did you do with the group? Did you ever what, go to their meetings? Did, uh, Howard, you did not, did Jim. Is we went through and hired a person to come in and come <laughs> and up And totally with ignored the group I formed for two years, a, about 40 people, with right? With a plan yeah. that I believe you have modified to a point where uh, the park cannot be utilized to its fullest, fullest extent. I don't think you followed It's the exactly plan. the way Cotts it's did it. It's exactly the way Cotts did it. <laughs> the way you paid to have it done, it's Jim. It's exactly the way. The <laughs> to pavilion, this point, it is. The pavilion is exactly where Cotts is recommended. It's in the same area, yeah. It may not be the, same the exact same square inch, but his dimensions weren't exact anyway. So it's in the vicinity. Yes, it is. So I don't know what your complaint is there. But yes, it was a volunteer effort, and it has been a volunteer effort to this point. You haven't done anything over there. It's been a group of people that have done it all up to this point. Everything's been volunteer. Okay? So I don't know what your complaint is about volunteers. They've been doing it. But we can't expect them to do it forever, Jim. There's only a handful of people that have been doing all the work. Now it's time to chip in a little bit. We've shown that we can do it. The park's there. We've got quite a bit done. Now it's time for the town to, time to for do the a little bit. To pick up the There's, what's the pickup? We have a brush and weeds account, twenty-seven thousand well, dollars, to, to do the size of the road. I think they can take once a week to go over there and mow that lawn for a half a day, which Barb's husband volunteered to do this summer. He doesn't even have anything to do with that part, so but he come over and mowed it. So you had a volunteer, right? But we cannot count on them forever. This town has to take some responsibility for that park now. If we can get volunteers, fine. Okay, I've run out of resources. Now the town's got to take over. Okay. That's and the only way we're going to get it done is if someone in our highway department who has the resources, the manpower, and so on, can do it. And it's not asking a lot. That's all we're asking next year. We're not asking them to fix the plumbing. We can take that out of there. All I'm saying is you need someone to maintain that park and the grounds around here. We don't want someone that's going to say, well, I'm too busy doing the roads. It's not going to get done. Well, if he's too busy doing the roads, I guarantee you he'll undoubtedly do the roads, and I would think that the people in the town would prefer to do the roads before he mows the park. Well, then, next election, if the park hasn't been mowed for two years and they elect him again, fine. That's the answer, right? I think it is. Okay, that's well, what it would be. So. Then. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, do you want to whittle something out of here? Do you want to leave it as is, or, or what's the board's uh, privilege on this? Yeah. I believe the public, uh, when you, if you're listening to your public, I believe your public I've listened. vote against it. I've listened. 
I believe they're both against it, so I'm ready to let... I'd listen to more Republicans here tonight, Jim. Well, you, Howard, you listen to more Republicans here tonight when it suits your purpose. I, well, think, we, I think we all do that, Jim. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments from the board on this? Well, if, if this happens, there are a lot of things in here that don't need to be here. That's right. There are some things in here that don't need to be in here, and they weren't intended to be in here but they're in here because it's a general DPW type of resolution or local law. It's a model local law, and we can modify it to meet our needs. After the public hearing? I thought the public voiced their opinions on a document. Now you're <clears throat> telling me you're going to modify and change this? Jim, you know very well you can change a document as long as you don't change, change the intent of the document. You know that. How long have you been on this board? I've been on for quite a while. Then, then you've changed. You have you changed have local laws after, after public hearings after, yourself, after Jim. Public hearings, not, not that you... Okay, go ahead. We're not changing the intent of this local law. The intent is to create a DPW. Is that correct? So if we change the duties which we can do by this document at any time, why are you questioning it now? We're going to do it. If you want to do it, let's do it. If you don't want to do it, then let's approve it as is. Or disapprove it as is, whichever. I'm ready to vote it up. Th now. This has been on the table now for five days. You got a chance to review it. If you want to strike some things out of here, let's do it. That's what it's all about. Jesse, would you like to strike some things out of here to make it better uh, to your taste? personally can remove section uh, 2C. I don't, I don't see that to be a, a concern that we have, and obviously they're not equipped to handle that anyway. So I'll recommend that one to be scratched. Well, I say 2B. Okay, 2B, the care and construction, operations and maintenance, repair of all town building structures, capital facilities, improvements, solid waste, which we don't even have, and other physical property of town. I don't have a problem scratching that one. That's 2B. A is basically what the highway superintendent's obligated to anyway, so we can't change that. We can move D up to B, which is basically what we're trying to do here, which is the care, maintenance, repair, and construction of town parks, lawns, and playgrounds. And that's not to say that Bob has to go over there next year and rebuild that playground. That's just to say if we need him to do something over there, the town board has the right to re request it. E, the care, maintenance, repair, and operation of such vehicles, tools, supplies, and other personal properties that the town board may authorize. Basically, he does that now as a highway superintendent. Um, so you can move that up to C. So now you have section uh, A, B, and C under section 2. Qualifications and duties are pretty much cut and dry there. I don't think you'd want to change that. And then section 4, it just describes the deputy, which we already have a deputy highway superintendent, so it makes sense to have that in there. Other than that, uh, all right, well, let's see what's on this one here. I don't see anything else that needs to be changed unless someone else has another suggestion. And again, this has nothing to do with the quality of the work that Bob has performed. It only has to do with what we need to have done. The, the only thing, Howard, is uh, this section you say is 2B now. <coughs> care, maintenance, repair, and construction of all time. I think the uh, and construction if you're, should be out of there. If you want him to do care and maintenance on the part, but you're talking about building one. And well, yeah, but I'm not really saying that he's going to go out and design and build all our parts. What that is really saying is that if we need some help, like with the road, he did do the road initially the first year we, we uh, leased that property. To me, that's construction of the park, partial construction of the park. He went in, he had the equipment, he put the road in. If you take that out of there, then he can, he's not obligated to do any of that if this board thinks we need a road. Uh, the property over by Great Bear, if we ever get to the point where we're going to do something with that, um, that's going to need some road work done there. If we remove that, then he's not obligated to do that well, either. Well, that is a road, so he's... Mm -hmm. That's already a town road. He would be obligated there. Okay, but we may be extending it or doing some other work to it that may not be part of the town road that you might want done. And if that's the case, you need that in there to cover you. But again, well, it's, it's actually the way the that property hits the canal um, property, the only part of the road that would ever be maintained by the town is already a town road. Mm -hmm. And uh, anything else would just be 
a hiking or biking trail that at this point has all been maintained by um, Bill Price. So I think we could find a few Boy Scouts that could do the work that um, one guy has. Okay, well, it's, it's, if you're not comfortable with that word, that can be stricken. Um, I, I feel it's not hurting anything to have it in there. It's not meaning, it doesn't mean that he's going to be obligated to build parks. It just means if we need his equipment to do some of the construction aspects of a park, like roads or grading, or even maybe putting in some tiles if we need to here and there, that would cover it. He, that would put it, it under the job category for him to do. Any other questions or comments from the board on this local law? Okay, I'm going to open the floor to questions and comments from the public again on this particular local law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, exactly. How many parks do we have in this town? One. One. Mm -hmm. And where are they located? Right across the street. Uh, what's this piece of property that I keep hearing about called Great Bear? It's a piece of property called Great Bear. And what's its purpose? Its purpose is uh, to be an investment for the town for the future in a number of ways. One, there's grant monies available, and we're waiting for one right now possibly that would pay for that park or that property so that we don't incur any cost for it. Uh, there's canal funds that the, the state is trying to push uh, throughout the state that we could get our hands on possibly to do some work along the shoreline there, the river, and make it available for boating and fishing for the residents of this town and so on. Um, it was an investment opportunity that we saw that we felt we should make. Uh, 20 years ago, we had an opportunity to buy the whole Great Bear property, and this board chose not to do so. As you know now, it's owned by the city of Fulton, who draws all their water from it. Could have been a nice investment for us, but they didn't, didn't go with it at the time. Yeah. So. I lived in the town of Clay, mm -hmm. and uh, any of the parks and recreation things, like mowing the lawns, construction, repair, and maintenance of park in the town of Clay mm -hmm. was done by parks and recreation and not by the highway department. It strikes me that this is an opportunity to obfuscate the true cost of what the parks are going to be in terms of what the town is going to spend. So we can muddy the water here as to what it's really going to cost the taxpayers in this town. And in the town of Clay, they do have a direct appropriation for the um, parks and recreation, whereby they have money, they have equipment, and they have persons assigned to do these jobs specifically mow the lawns, fix whatever needs to be done, grind stumps, take down trees, and other things. And if they need to borrow equipment from the highway department, they do so. But personnel-wise, they do not utilize the highway department's personnel to perform work within the parks and recreation, and I am adamantly opposed to this. Well, right now I can see uh, whether this is accepted or rejected, but we could have parks and recreation. Probably what you're talking about right now wouldn't cost us more than $100,000 of taxpayers' money that we don't have. Well, the equipment there aren't as many people in the town of Albany as there are in the town of Clay. That's right. We're not as wealthy as the town of Clay. We don't need that, as many parks as that. It certainly sounds to me like we have two parks in this town. No, we have one park. Where, where do you see and the other park? We're looking park? to build another. No, we're not looking to build another. We have some property that could possibly be uh, land that could be utilized by the public, but doesn't necessarily mean we're going to build a playground and a ball field and parks there. It's just land. Is it's, there available it's a nature to area to? that's available to use. There is no plans for a playground there. It depends, I guess, on what you consider a park to be. If uh, a lot of people, when they're talking about it, they're talking about a, a park to be a playground. If you're talking playground, there's only one. It sounds to me like it's off the tax roll. No, the budget's already been set for next year. No, Whatever happens. The, the property is not paying taxes into the town anymore, is it not? Correct. It's town property now. Sounds like a park to me. Well, we got 200 well, acres of city property in the town that taxes don't get paid on, do right. we? got, I don't know how many thousand acres the county owns in this town. They don't pay taxes on. That, that's the prerogative of the county. Uh, yeah. yeah, but not at our this expense, our I'll, I'll tell you. Have some, have some land so the people can enjoy it. You can't enjoy the county's land, you can't enjoy the city of Fulton's land. But this is some land that the town is don't own and we hope they'd be able to enjoy. Nature trails. And it only generated about two hundred dollars a year. Not if it had luxury homes on it, it wouldn't. Well, it, it, it didn't, and it won't have. <laughs> I don't think it could because it's in a watershed area. No, the city of Fulton would not want residential traffic going through their wells. I'm sure. Um, so I, I don't think that would ever happen. 
But nevertheless, uh, uh, this isn't costing the taxpayers any more money. All they're doing is mowing the lawn. That's all we're asking them to do right now. And it's only one park that we're talking about. And we're not asking them to go there and clear brush over at this other facility um, or property. Um, I wish more people in the town had the concerns that you as a non-resident have. It's just, it, I live in the town. Oh, I thought you just said you lived in Clay. No, I lived in Clay for... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I misunderstood I you. I live in Clay because the taxes are ridiculous. No, they probably are. They're not bad here, though, are they? No. <laughs> Thanks. We're working on it. Yeah, you're working on it. Uh, no, we're not. As a matter of fact, we've ro lowered taxes twice now since I've been on this board. So that is not a, a true comment. Uh, well, you, you, you want to disagree with that, Jim? I, wa I want to say that you lowered it one year. 15%. And put, put, and put Dave McFarland's no, I did not. corner deliberately, and you sat here. I wish the TV cameras had been here at that meeting, Howard. I really wish they had. <laughs> Seems like you got through the two years okay, Jim, without yeah, any we got tax money. Two years. <coughs> well, I know some people in this town that appreciated that, Jim. Yeah. Sorry you didn't. They didn't appreciate um, that. I didn't appreciate Jerry. Well, we could create a parks and recreation, Jerry, but as you know, that would, like Jesse said, then we got to raise taxes again <laughs> and create other departments and more bureaucracy, which we don't want to do. Okay? We are still relying on volunteers, and we'd like our highway department to help when we ask them to and not when they feel like it. That's the difference. <laughs> well, it's nothing to do with this board, I'll tell you that. Alan. Jim, you've been talking about the money for this park, mm -hmm. and I'm sitting here getting furious because you voted to give $5,000 to some consultation people down in Syracuse to tell us what our park should look like, and now you're quibbling over a couple of hundred dollars for mowing the lawn, and that $5,000 that you and the previous supervisor, Dave McFarland, essentially threw away, as far as I was concerned, could have been used to, to, uh, for the physical uh, needs of the park and for the maintenance. So I don't want to hear anything the, the about five, the five thousand dollars that we spent actually planned the drainage system for that park, which you utilized, which cost over thirteen. Well, I believe it was thirteen thousand dollars to put those drains in. You needed those plans. You weren't going to do that without a plan. And you can't tell I, me that I, 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 I don't. I what you say is true, but. You act like we were over there doing the park without any thought of the drainage and things like that. And that's not true. That's not true. And I still say you wasted $5,000 of the recreation money. You wasted it. That's, wasted. that's your opinion. And that is my opinion. That is my opinion. I think you wasted it. Now you're quibbling about mowing the lawn. I'm not quibbling about mowing the lawn. You don't want the lawn. You want my wife, who, who's one of the volunteers, to mow it. Is that what you want? I mean, maybe we should come over here to the town hall when Bob brings the mower back for Howard to mow it. Maybe we should take it over there and mow it. Is that what you want? Or we could buy a lawnmower. We could actually, there are a lot of things that we could do, but I don't believe it should be a part of the highway system. Who's going to mow the lawn? Barb? Who's going to mow the lawn here? The reason why a lot of things get done by the highway department is not to, to overburden the highway department but as a cost-saving mechanism because then you aren't, <clears throat> excuse me, paying for extra supervisory personnel. You're not guaranteeing anybody a certain amount of hours. Um, and there are, if anybody's noticed, has been a lot of roads that they mowed the sides of um, more times than really had to be done to just keep the brush down. I know they did this, the Silk Road at least twice, and I would have been happier to see them do it just once to keep the brush down and do some other mowing that needed to be done. That wouldn't have been any extra expense. It would have been utilization of the same people and equipment that we're already spending because when it comes right down to it, these guys are full time. And um, if they aren't mowing one place, they're gonna be mowing another. They, you have different times that you have a little fill-in work. Well, it wouldn't hurt if a little fill-in work were mowing. Whether or not we need to make it a Department of Public Works to accomplish that, is a different question, but I don't think it would be a burden on the highway department. Just to state a fact, too, 
um, that you said, Jim, that, that Cox and Associate, who we paid the $5,000 to design the drainage system, I'll correct you on that. Randy Bennett sat in here with Mr. Cox several days in a row and designed that with him, told him how it should be done, because he knew the land. He lives right next door there, worked with him on it, and as it turned out, Randy was the one that got the little bit to do the job. Uh, we could have done that without Cox and Associates. Randy Bennett took care of it for us. I don't think so. Well, I know so, because it happened. I think we need it happened, Jim. I think we need um, I saw a hand up in the back. Colleen? Yeah, in fact, they mowed the side of the road so well that before primary, they mowed three feet onto my lawn and knocked down every sign I had in my front yard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other comments? Okay, hearing none. Uh, Barb, would you uh, pull the council, please? Mr. Chairs? Before I go, I'd like to say a little bit. I can't talk to you today. I believe that uh, with the literature that I've read, the research on this, the roads come first before the, even the, the, the DPW. The roads would come first anyway. They're the priority over a park or the grounds or something like that. So the way don't matter the way you have DPW or uh, highway department, uh, they could still use the same excuse to get out from doing the job. The people in this town is happier with the highway department because this last budget thing there, uh, discussions and everything, uh, they got an increase in the highway budget and you tax it up four dollars a, a thousand to, uh, for the highway budget. Anybody that has a one the department that gets all the money that they need to run the department should be able to do a good job. Uh, in the industry, every department is being cut back. In, in uh, uh, local government field, like the county government and everything, a lot of department heads have been asked to take a 10% cut in the annual budget. Our highway department don't take a cut. Last year, they, they, we froze the wages and we froze the budget, and they still had a surplus in their account. A lot of the stuff that we, we do for, for the kids, it's an emotional issue. And when people uh, are in the industry, we do a lot of stuff for the community. We don't have to, but we do it because we take pride in our job. It seems like it, with, with the, uh, the highway department is well equipped. Uh, they get new equipment all the time. Are the people are happy paying for this equipment? They got a new grade on, they're asking for another new truck. Uh, we're no complaints for the public. And this comes right down to the, the pride in the community in what you want to do, in what you can do. And I don't think that right now, uh, I'm not done too well on my reading yet on, on the good points and bad points about this. But unless my hearing is bad, one night at the bill paying session, uh, Mr. Kerfin said that uh, he was going to get a park if we made a resolution. But I'm the only one that heard that. And uh, shame on me because I didn't put a, a resolution up. But I, I believe they, they can do it. And, and uh, if the people's happy with, with uh, earning the money that they're spending, they're happy with, Barney seems to be happy with. Uh, the highway department spending all these funds, uh, I think right now is a bad time to worry about going to DPW. Even though in the future of only expanding, we'll probably need it, but I, I'd still like to do more research on this. On this. Yeah, I can't say too much time. I hope no. No. Mr. Smart. Uh, I think that any work that is done on the parks, whenever possible, should be done by people that we already know and trust, so that we aren't having to pay rental on equipment, um, because we already have it. It's ridiculous. Um, but I don't think that this um, really handles it the way that would um, be appropriate. I'd rather see it handled through the budget process so that it um, doesn't um, end up doing what people are afraid it could do, which is all of a sudden um, a lot more is being done uh, for other areas other than highway, uh, which um, wasn't what people's intention was when they did this. 
people are, are saying now they just want a minor amount of things done. I'm afraid if this is passed, it could end up being very sloppy bookkeeping about where the work is being done. Uh, what I'd rather see is have the work done by the highway department, but have um, any budget that it's being done for uh, this be put under um, building and grounds or parks in the town part of the budget so that um, a tighter rein is kept on what it actually is being spent. So I, I really think the, um, that would be um, a more appropriate way of facing this. So I'd have to vote no. Well, I might just want to have something to say. I voted to have the public hearing and let the people voice their opinion. Uh, it's like anything else. Some are political, but it's, they have their view. And I'm still going to vote yes. Okay. Um, well, first of all, Bill, I did hear what Bob Kirby said about a resolution, but I didn't think uh, any board would want to have to make resolutions every time we need the lawn mowed or something done around here. It sounds kind of uh, too much to me to, to have to deal with. Um, my interest here isn't mine because I'm not going to be here next year. I don't have to deal with the park, the lawn, Bob Kirby, or any, anything else. So my interest is purely to see that things get done around here the way they should be and that no one else has to go through what I went through trying to get things done. Um, Obviously, we've got a majority vote of no here, uh, which is going to say that this isn't going to happen, but uh, I'm still going to vote yes because I think it's necessary. Uh, I don't think it means anything other than what the board wants it to mean, and that's up to the next board to decide that. Um, the next board can do the same thing we just did next month if they want to, or they can simply make the resolutions like Bob Kirping suggested and, and Bill thinks it might be the way to go. Um, so my vote is yes, and that's the way it is. Next resolution, 95-227, support extension of CHIPS. Uh, I'm going to read quickly the resolution that, that they forwarded to us as a model resolution, but basically it says, move to support the Transportation Industries Committee's efforts promoting to the New York State Legislature the need for secure and adequate funding for local transportation. Uh, actually, I won't read all this because it pretty much says the same thing, only in a lot more words. So. Uh, I'm going to move that resolution. I'll second. Any discussion or comments from the board on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? Okay, Barbie, we poll the council, please. Okay. Mr. Ridgeless? Hi. Mr. Smart? Uh, in case some people didn't get from the, the um, description that was given before, this is where a lot of the uh, paving money comes from that Bob uses to uh, repave the roads every year. Uh, Aye. 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 Okay, next resolution, 95-228, contract for diesel fuel. Uh, move that the contract to furnish number one diesel <coughs> special fuel to the highway department for the year 1996 be awarded to Babcock Oil Company as per big quotation of December 12, 1995 at 69.78 cents per gallon delivered. I'll move it. Okay, move by Jeff Warner, second. Second. Questions or comments on the board? Questions or comments from the public? Okay, by our public council, please. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Supervisor? Aye. Resolution 95-229, contract for washed gravel. Move that the bid from Northern Aggregates Incorporated for washed crushed gravel be approved as follows. Gradation 1 and or gradation 2, $6.50, uh, FOB, $6.50. And I think the next thing should be FOB, $7, if I'm not mistaken. Delivered in ice control sand for New York State DOT specs of $4.75 a ton and FOB, $5.25 delivered. Am I reading that right? FOB is delivered, correct? Yeah. No? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I got it backwards. I'm sorry. No, it's right as, as, as written here. 650 FOB and $7 delivered. 475 a ton FOB, 525 delivered. I'll move it. Second. Any discussion or comments from the board? 
questions or comments from the public? Larry, we pull the council, please. Mr. Pierce? Aye. Mr. Ridgway? Aye. Mr. Smart? Aye. Mr. Warren? Aye. Aye. Resolution 95-230, donation container for Rick Guernsey. Um, as many of you know, we had a, a, a tragic accident here a few weeks ago where one of our highway workers was injured and he's still in the hospital in, in serious condition, although he has, has shown some improvement. Um, and in an effort to help his family out uh, with their expenses that they're incurring with this uh, unfortunate mishap, uh, we're going to play, we want to place, place a container in the clerk's office for any donations. Um, also, it's not part of this resolution, but uh, the new, this board and the new board coming in is uh, discussing plans for a, a fundraiser here in the town hall, some kind of a dinner, spaghetti, chicken, or whatever, uh, sometime in January. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know in advance of that, and we hope that you'll attend that and, and help the family out in, in this effort. Um, with that, I'm going to move that the town clerk be authorized to place a container in the town clerk's office to collect donations for injured town highway employee Rick Guernsey. I'll move it. I'll second it. Any discussion or comments from the board? Yeah, if, if people had wanted to do things other than that, um, Rick is allergic to most flowers, so that wouldn't really... Um, be uh, appreciated because it would just make him feel worse. But if people wanted to send him cards and um, encouragement, I'm, I'm sure the family would appreciate it. Howard, also, I don't know if this is the proper time for them to do it under here in new business, but you were going to check to see the legality of right. a continuation of salary for Rick at least up to 40 hours a week. Now, he's on workman's compensation at the present time. And uh, my intent, and uh, what I asked Howard mm -hmm. to do, is to check on this to see if he could if we could legally give, a pay supplement, him, yeah. give him a supplement mm -hmm. to bring his workman's comp monies currently up to what he would make for 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. did, did you get a chance? I, I did check on it, and that's why it's not on here, because unfortunately the law does not provide for that. If we do that, one, it's illegal, and two, it would set a precedent whereby we would have to do that for any employee that if they hurt their foot or anything. That uh, is illegal? That, according to our attorney, Ron Carr, uh, we cannot do that legally. It would be considered a gift of the taxpayer's money and a not, not a continuation of sick leave pay. Ex I'm saying exactly. extend his sick leave pay is what I'm saying. I'm not saying it as a grant. I'm saying that we would just extend his sick leave. He has X number. Right. I understand what you're saying, Jim. But see, we, we, they, we don't have a contract with the highway department. We, they're not a union. Um, there's no you know, binding agreements with them for anything like that. And that's the way it would have to be done in order to, it, in other words, it has to be done across the board for everybody. And it's not that way. If we want to come up with a new contract for them uh, and make it retroactive or something like that, maybe it could happen, but it can't happen the way you were talking about you, it happening. You can't continue someone's salary. That's what Ron said. That's what well, Ron said. I need to check with him. Well, we well. could we could look into this more. We have a meeting the 28th. That's right. Yeah, if you yeah, if you want to talk to him yourself directly and explain to him exactly what you you mean. I believe we can continue a person's salary uh, as, as sick leave. We can extend mm -hmm. sick leave. I believe we're authorized to do that. You can, can you if no. he's on comp, though? Uh, there's, there's a lot I, of rules, there's the a lot of rules about sure comp. About. Well, I asked the general question if there's any way we can continue payment to him uh, up to the amount that he was making as a uh, <coughs> uh, regularly paid highway worker. And right away he said, no, can't do it. And, and I said, is there any way we can work around it? And he said, no, can't do it. Now, if you have a way that you have in uh, mind that maybe might work, uh, let, please consult with him. I'll, I'll talk to them and I'll let no. me see. Okay, but that's why it's not on there. Okay. Good, thank you. Then we can bring this up again the 28th, the 28th anyway. Right, right. Uh, any questions or comments from the public on this well, resolution? we finish the vote. Yeah, we haven't voted yet. No, we don't vote until I hear the public's oh, comment. Sorry. Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? Okay, Barbie, poll the council. Aye. 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 Okay, resolution. Uh, <laughs> resolution 95-231, employment policy for highway employees. Um, I won't go through and read this whole thing. It's in the minutes of, or the resolutions here if you want to get a copy of it. But basically what it is, it's an, ag an agreement, which I checked on it with Ron Carr also because we had the problem deciding whether we should call this a contract, an agreement, or what and he suggested call it an employment policy, okay? Um, and that's basically what it is. It's a policy that states the different uh, 
holidays they get, uh, the increments they get, their leave time, their overtime, and so on and so forth, which was presented to us by the highway workers for our acceptance and approval. And that's what this resolution is for. Um, I'll move it. I'll second it. Any questions or comments or discussion from the board? Um, it's written clear so that there shouldn't be any problem. Right, and some of the changes are actually just clarification of what the policy was already, but sometimes one person would read it and get one interpretation, somebody else would read it and get another. So we wanted to firm up the um, language to it so there was only one way to read it. And also it was never done by resolution, it was just an agreement in the back room. We said, yeah, we'll do that, and it doesn't hold much weight if it comes down to something that they want to see done and it wasn't being done. So if this is in writing, it's going to be approved, hopefully, and, uh, and there'll be no problems. Any other questions or comments? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? <coughs> okay, Barbie, pull the council, please. Aye. 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 Okay, last resolution uh, on the Howard, agenda. This last resolution, I'd like to make a motion that, seeing that we haven't seen specs or anything on it, to table it for the new town board, they can look at the specs and go over them. I haven't seen a copy of the specs. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. Okay. I thought we were going to vote on um, doing state, state bid. bid. Well, it doesn't say that here. That's yeah, why that's, I say. Yeah, that's what I relayed to Bob, that uh, was what we would want instead of this. But this is not what we got, so. I don't, if, if it, I don't know if he decided not to do it the other way or what. Well, we can talk to him, and if it comes up before the 28th, we can... Because he said state, uh, the state bid didn't have a truck that would meet all specifications he needed. It doesn't say that that's what he's going to get. And I think that we we can finish this the 28th okay. if we get the rest of the information. Okay, sure. We have a motion to table it. Uh, Barb, before the council. Aye. 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 And I'd also like to say that... Uh, I don't want this to go where we lose this opportunity to be able to get this vehicle on state bid also because there's quite a difference in price if you can get state bid on this, this type of truck. We did say we were tabling it until the 28th. Is that correct? Right? Well, yeah, that was my understanding. The 28th, and we hope we have all well, the if we have the information we have available the to us at the 28th, we can deal with it then. We'll deal with it. All right, if not, the new sure. board will take care of it in January. I'll make sure we Okay. okay. Um, okay, do we have any new business before the board tonight? No new business. Uh, do we have any petitions from the public tonight? Okay, I have one petition I received uh, November 16th. <coughs> Dear Supervisor Rose, we the undersigned of the Town of Volney and neighboring townships petition the Town of Volney to consider the installation of a street light at the corner of Silk and Mucky Roads in the interest of safety. It is difficult to see the intersection since the reconstruction of Silk Road, which we would like to add, is a vast improvement. However, due to the sharp angle of the intersection turning onto Mucky Road and the lack of lighting, there has already been an accident at this intersection. Numerous cars have nearly passed this intersection, resulting in cars cooling their tires trying to make the turn at the last minute. We would hope that you would take this matter under consideration at your earliest possible convenience. Thank you for your time. Signed, Robert Donaldson. R Rural Route 8, Box 1230, Fulton, New York. And I have a petition here. There's, the names aren't numbered, um, but uh, it looks to be at least 50, 60 signatures on here. So. They never stopped in your house. <laughs> stopped at mine, I signed. <laughs> I will forward this petition to the new supervisor elect, Dennis Lockwood, and uh, I expect the new town board will, will look into this. Um, that, that is a dangerous intersection. I have to drive that road um, through there a lot, and um, it would make it easier for us not having accidents to that intersection. you have any questions or comments on that, Jeff? No. Okay. Okay. Um, I just, well, let's see. I don't know where this fits in, but I just wanted to announce, uh, for those who may not know already, uh, the Silverite Company in Fulton has decided to stay in the city of Fulton and create over 100 new jobs. 
So that's very good news, the best news I've heard in two years. Um, I mean, with everyone else leaving, it's nice to see someone's going to stay and, and, and provide some more jobs in this area that is really hard pressed for, for jobs. Um, as a final comment for my last time sitting here as supervisor and on this town board, um, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that supported me and my efforts to do what I thought was best for this community. And I want to thank all the people who've been coming to the meetings pro or con the last two years and the last six years I've been on the board. Um, that's what it's all about, you know, discussing ideas and issues and getting the job done. Um, the last two years have been a very trying time for any town board, uh, especially this one with the uh, uh, annexation issue, uh, other controversial issues, industries closing, uh, uh, taxes, uh, uh, grieve, assessments being grieved by industry. Uh, this has been a very trying two years, and I want to congratulate this town board for the job that they've done to try to overcome all these difficult things we've had to face. I think they've done a great job. Um, and. Uh, with that, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year, and I want to wish Dennis Lockwood and his new board a lot of luck, and uh, I'll be here to support him wherever I can. I will work with Dennis in the transition to try to see that things are uh, um, smooth flowing for him to step into the seat, and uh, I thank you all. Future meetings, December 28th, we will be signing our year-end bills. And uh, if there's what time is that meeting, Howard? Pardon me? Oh, you're absolutely correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're, 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 okay. At this time, I'm going to open the floor to public comment on anything you want to talk about. Any takers? Okay. Fern? Speak to Alan. When you were talking about petitions, it made me realize that... Um, Twice I've received a copy of a letter from the state DOT stating that they didn't find that the shortcut road needed any lower speed limits. Um, obviously, nobody in that uh, group came and drove that road and considered the fact of all the children <coughs> that are on it. But somewhere along the line, they've never, unless I've missed the meeting or missed the letter, They've never gotten back to me about the speed limit on 45 and around the church and the cemeteries. And lower, lower, that's more than it is? It's never been lower. Oh, that's right. It's <coughs> never been lower. They suggest as a adjusted <coughs> speed of 15 miles an hour. I only ask them to lower it down from the 55 because any time I've ever called about accidents or speed on that curve, they said that they can't issue a ticket because the legal speed limit is 55 miles an hour. And it just seems funny. I got two letters regarding the shortcut road and none at all uh, with anything about the 45. Yeah. So I don't know what's happened or... Yeah, it, it, the response never did include 45. Yeah, right. We asked for right. We, we send, the didn't we send a letter back to them letting them know of that mistake? Two of them. And we haven't heard back from them yet, have we? No. So it seems funny that they won't even answer this petition when they suggest that the speed should only be 15 miles an hour, and yet mm -hmm. they leave it legally 55. Right. Well, I have to deal with the government a lot in my job, and sometimes you have to tell them about six times. We've only done twice. So. Thanks, Fern. Any other comment, Colleen? Yeah, um, I just wanted to ask and make sure January 2nd is when the um, court case starts for annexation? Yes, that's the date. Right? What time? I'm not sure. Anybody know the time? I believe it's in the Swiggle. Is that right, Colleen? Yeah, it's in the Swiggle. In the Swiggle. I'm not sure what time, Colleen. I can find out for you. I just wanted to. Very near and dear to my heart. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that other people would, some other people might be interested in knowing that, you know, it's finally gonna, something's finally gonna happen about it. I mean, it takes a while because of all the, the case and, and the referees and all that kind of stuff, but finally, maybe sometime this year, we'll get an ending to it. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Alan? Alan, Castle County, 45. Uh, Howard, I 
I hope to see you out here with us because it's a lot more fun out here than it is up there. <laughs> This thing with uh, Rick Gerns here, there's several things that disturb me about that. First of all, how did you find out about this accident, if I may ask you? Uh, I stopped in here at the town hall uh, later in that day, and Bart told me about it. I, maybe I'm wrong, but it would seem to me that there should have been some comment either by Bob here tonight or in his report uh, regarding this this whole accident and I, I, I don't know maybe he just reports how much money he spends and how many beaver dams he whatever he does to them but it would seem to me that that uh, some information to the to the board or to the town or to the citizens or something should have been forthcoming from the superintendent. All I know is, you know, like I tell you, what I read in the newspaper, that's all I know, but um, and it, 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 you didn't learn a lot from that either, and maybe I'm wrong, but I, I if I were the superintendent of roads, I would have had something in the report there, at least saying that it happened, at least acknowledge that it happened, at least get something uh, down. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but that's why. I, well, I tend to agree. I, I, if I had heard it from Barb, I probably would have read it in the paper the next day because Bob never informed me of it at all. But that's the way it is. Um, any other public comment? You want me to elaborate what I talked about? Oh, feel free. Uh, the only thing I can find out is somebody called me said that according to municipal law, which governs towns, county, city, unless there's two or more people hurt, he does not have to report it. If there's a fatality, he has to report it. So unless, according to the municipal law, to the state, if there, he did not have to report it to them unless there's two or more people injured. That's their policy. Charlie? Um, it's interesting to note that the, the news apparently was just released uh, this, this past week in the paper, but that uh, for whatever reason, I'm not sure it means, Miller Brewing Company has taken its property off the market. Uh, I'm not sure what it means, and I'm not sure why it wasn't reported in October when they did. But uh, that's interesting and uh, hopeful. Yes, it is. And, uh, I'm confident, and I'm predicting that you'll see some activity in that facility this coming year. I, and you can bet it'll go under IDA, and they'll get a 50% reduction in their taxes. Count on it. They just wanted to mess my administration up for two years. <laughs> Okay. Any other public comment? No, but Howard, seeing that Kevin is here, can we ask him the question on that road that Roma states? Oh, yeah, yeah. If he, do you have a map exactly where that road was proposed, dimensions down on Roma State off King, Kingdom Road? I should have a final site plan that road, yes. Is that it, well, done by an engineer? Is it surveyed and does it have a description of the road boundaries and so on? I have to check. Or is it just a sketch and drawing? No, it should be a... It was, done, it was done by the his engineer. I don't believe so. Well, we have time. Could you, could sure. you get it, Kevin? I'll live over there. Okay. <laughs> 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 while, while he's doing that, I'm just going to read off the future meetings. Uh, the next one is December 28th, which we're going to do the end of the year bill signing. And uh, time. the time, uh, oh, we didn't even put that down here. Uh, we're going to sign bill the six, and have the meeting at seven, or? Can do that. 6 yeah. p.m. bill signing. It hasn't been discussed. Well, there may not be need for any formal meeting. Uh, well, there would be to transfer the funds. Oh, I'm sorry, you're absolutely right. Yeah, we have to transfer the funds to get the bills paid. Okay, yeah, so there will be a meeting for that. 
uh, but there may not be a meeting for anything else unless we uh, decide That's to discuss um, it with the road. Well, I think it might be nice if we contacted the Spataros. They have gone back and forth about that zone change. Who is that now? Uh, the Spataros. Um, it's over on um, Owens Road, and all that is is originally back when zoning went in, they thought <coughs> maybe they'd end up with a bigger industrial park where Miller's was and more of the land would get bought. And so a bunch of land that was really residential got zoned industrial, and they'd like it changed to residential or agricultural, one or the other, to make it so they can uh, build a house. Okay. Um, maybe we could contact them, so maybe we could vote about having a public hearing so that it could get addressed in January. Um, yeah, because well, I haven't done any reading on this. If there's some urgency to it, I would say yes, but I, I don't know if there's really any urgency. Maybe we might want to let the next town board set a public hearing and let them hear, you know, do it on their own since they're so close to stepping in here anyway. But I, I think maybe they need to realize they need to get the information to the town board and get it moving. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think they want to start building. Okay, well, I would still want to consult with the new town board to find out when they would be available. I wouldn't want to set a public hearing for them without, uh, uh, unless we do it at the next town board meeting, which I don't know if they want to tackle that right off the bat, but, you know. Well, we, well, we don't even know when they're going to meet. That's right. That's right. So I, that's why I think it's probably better yeah, left up to, them to, up to them to deal with the first of the year. Um, yeah, because uh, unless there's some disagreement, we have to adopt the dates for our work session and town board meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So six o'clock, seven o'clock. Um, uh, okay, six for bill signing. Six for bill signing, to, right. We'll try to have them done by seven. And, and actually, that's probably a long time. That's, that's an hour. Why don't we say 6.30? Okay. 6.30, 6 .30. and then 30. seven for the meeting. Um, January 1st, uh, Dennis, have you decided when you're going to have your organizational meeting yet in the time or anything? Or? Four o'clock? Okay, so you want me to announce then four o'clock on January 1st? Okay. Okay, so the organizational meeting for the new town board coming in will be uh, January 1st at 4 p.m. Uh, January 9th, they will be conducting their bill signing and agenda preparation. And January 11th will be the next regularly scheduled town board meeting for 1996. And have the they board. decided that that's the nights they're going to meet and so forth? Oh, no. They have to establish right. their nights. You that's right. I'm, that. I'm just assuming this is tradition. It's always been Thursday. Yeah, You're right. I, I, I uh, know we had to uh, discuss changing the meetings. No, but they could. Well, do you plan on it, or do you want me to leave it as, as this? Okay. Yeah, they can always change it the next month. Yeah, they can announce it in the paper if they want to. So we'll just say this is tentative then, in case you do want to change it. It's at a tentative date. And uh, okay, if there's no other public comment, I'm just I'm going to uh, close this meeting, and then we're going to. Uh, uh, reconvene to go, or not, re I'm sorry, we're not going to close this meeting. We're going to go into executive session. Uh, we have an issue to deal with concerning assessments and litigation um, with the Miller property. Um, so I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session now. And I'm going to invite the, the new board members, uh, Dennis, uh, Peggy, and Greg. And I'd also like to invite the uh, assessing unit, um, Faye, Dave, and, and uh, Bart. Okay, so I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, second. Uh, the time is uh, 8.55, Barb, uh, and we'll, we'll take a quick five-minute recess if you want before we go into this meeting. Yes, pull the council, please. <laughs> you got everybody, Barb? Okay. Okay, five minutes uh, recess, and then we'll go into executive session. Second. Second. 